Hello everybody, my name is Maya. And Snash. And we are the Jurassic Ark. Thank you for coming. Yeah. This is a very awesome day for us. Yeah, we just hit 50 subscribers because of our collaboration with Pia. And if you notice our fingers, we, we didn't initially plan this. You know, she's my wife and she asked me if she could paint my fingernails and I don't say no to her. So I have fingernail paint on, but then we decided to say, you know, it's the closest thing we have to scales. Yeah. So being World Snake Day, it's kind of fitting. We're going to just show you some of our snakes and talk about why they're important and they deserve a lot more respect than they get uh, in today's current climate. So we will be right back with a couple of snakes. See you soon. And welcome back. Here we have two of our snakes. Yeah, and as you can see, uh, boas are beautiful, but you got to remember when you get a boa, their size doesn't stop when you buy them at a pet store. Yes, when you buy them like this, they're going to turn out this. Yep, and both these are rescues. Everything in here is she has dirt stuck in her mouth again because she is really bad about that. Um, we have several snakes here, uh, nearly all of which are rescues. Um, and, you know, they're, they're amazing animals to own. But you have to know what you're getting into. That little adorable re uh, red tail boa or imperator boa, the common boa, they both generally sell under the same name at pet stores because people don't know how to t uh, tell them apart. They always will get, oh no, come on out of there. Okay, <laughs> fine. They'll get huge. I mean, you'll see her whole body travel over me. She's about 11 and a half feet. Hi, honey. She's, she's just going. I'm just letting her go. <laughs> Yeah, no, boas get huge, um, pythons also get huge, um, other, most pythons get huge. She won't be able to fit in that. Oh, she's fitting fine, she's just holding on. Uh, she's, she's just good, she's sitting on Maya's chair. Um, yeah, no, when you, get a, when you get a snake, just remember that the size does not end there. The size continues throughout their entire life. She just did a whole circle. Um, with that being said, guys, we'll be back to show you a couple other snakes. Uh, we have big snakes, small snakes, and everything in between. Um, we're not going to be showing the biggest of our snakes. Um, but yeah, we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. And I've only been holding Tobias, our resident carpet python here. He's just a baby still. He's bit me twice at this point. And we also have Mana, our Kenyan sand boa, who is in the middle of shedding right now. So she doesn't look the prettiest, but... When we say sh snakes come in all different sizes, we mean all different sizes. Oh, yeah. And each one of them is beautiful for a different <clears throat> reason. And that's what today is. This has been the show and tell portion of this video, but did you see that, him striking? He is not too happy. He's never happy. Uh, carpet pythons can be a little bit of an angry species. Uh, he'll get much, much bigger. I'm just going to let him wrap if that calms him down. Um, what we really want to talk about today is the importance of snakes in our environment and how underappreciated they are. Imagine a world where every square foot is nothing but vermin, and that brings disease, that brings a lack of food, that brings, you know, other populations of animals just going completely extinct. That's what this world would be without snakes. And for Snake Day, we just want to give them the credit that where credit is due. Sure, sometimes they can be a little creepy. Some of mine have intimidated me before. I've worked with 400-pound snakes, and it's kind of scary sometimes. But that doesn't negate the fact that they're so incredibly important to our environments. They do nothing but help Earth strive and survive. Um, they millions, billions of rodents every night. And um, they truly are something incredible. They are completely inferior to us when it comes to evolution. Um, they see an infrared, so all they see when they're looking at us is a giant heat signature. That's why when you're out in the wild, if you see a rattlesnake and it's afraid of you, that's because all it sees is a giant heat signature that could potentially be a huge predator. They don't know what you are, but here's the common misconceptions about snakes. Snakes will not chase you. Snakes actually want nothing to do with you. Um, so when you are in a situation where there is a snake on your property, be it a rattlesnake or a cottonmouth or a water moccasin, if you live overseas, um, y you know, your lapids, your various different vipers, or even non-venomous like the colubrids of the world and everything like that, just walk around them or call somebody to, re uh, to relocate them for you. Please do not kill snakes. They actually do want nothing to do with you. If they're your pet, even then, sometimes they can be a little bit angry. Um, they are made up of keratin. <laughs> oh my gosh. They are made up of keratin, muscle, and bone. 
and that's pretty much it. Don't bite me again. They don't, they, and another misconception is snakes hurt when they bite. They really don't. This little guy, when he bites you, you barely feel it. It's like right there, you see where he punctured. It doesn't really hurt. These guys are just, they're weird animals, um, but they are beautiful. Um, we're just trying to keep these two separated. Um, pythons are a little more aggressive, a lot more aggressive, especially than sand boas, and sand boas are like the most peaceful snake on the planet. Um, but no, what we're trying to say is overall, just respect snakes. Don't go out of your way to kill them. And if you do kill one, please use what's left of it as food or use this, um, use it, use the skin, use the scales for something, use the bones, do whatever you can to respect the animal. There's absolutely no choice but to kill it. But unless you get up in a snake's face, um, it's, it's not going to hurt you. Almost 100% of all snake bites occur when somebody is about to step on it or is reaching for it. That's really the only time a snake is wanting to hurt you is in self-defense. But their snakes don't chase. Snakes don't go out of their way. They don't wake up and think, how can I harm those pesky humans today? All they want to do is live. And when they survive, you survive. Thanks to these guys, arguably the most important animal of any ecosystem, we have the ability to survive. Is there anything you want to add to that? Just if you see a snake and you don't want and you don't know what kind of snake it is, make sure to look at the head. The head is what determines a snake from venomous or non-venomous. Um, a lot of the time. A Sometimes lot of the time. when like, it comes to elapids and colubrids, elapids or cobras, it can be hard to tell the difference, but you know, when they hood out, it's easy to tell. Yeah. But when you're approaching a snake, unless you know the snakes in your area, it's better just to not handle them. It's better to just avoid. Um, if you're an expert on reptiles, or if you at least have a good knowledge of reptiles in your area, and you see a garter snake, or you see a, a gopher snake, or a rat snake, or anything like that, by all means, go up and grab it. Do not handle wild venomous snakes unless you're a professional. It's just a bad idea. I've yes. been handling venomous snakes for a very, very long time. And I still make mistakes. And mistakes with them can be fatal. Anything else? Don't kill snakes. You don't, if you aren't experienced enough with snakes and you don't know the importance of snakes to our ecosystem, then go out and read. Yeah, just, just do a simple Google search. Or find a mentor, somebody who can teach you about them. Or find a book at a library, or even better yet, go buy one, own one, adopt one. That is the best way to do it. Do an, uh, Adopt a snake. Um, once you actually see how they act, and yes, I know I'm holding a bad example because he bit me, but he's a baby and he, you gotta remember, he's looking at something thousands of times his size and doesn't know what's gonna happen all the time. Um, educate yourself. The only person that doesn't like snakes is an uneducated person. And that's not me, if you're coming on here and you're saying, well, I, I don't know snakes, but does that make me uneducated? Like, I'm a college student or whatever. It doesn't make you uneducated on anything else other than snakes and how important they are. Um, they're beautiful animals, and they are a lot of fun to keep. I would recommend going out and getting a corn snake or a ball python or a sand boa. Uh, if you're really afraid of snakes, you little... <laughs> if you're really afraid of snakes... <laughs> Um, don't buy a carpet python. Yeah. They will make it harder for you. But sand boas and corn snakes and ball pythons are probably the best way you can go. They're easy keepers. You know, they don't grow bigger than three feet. Well, they do, but um, they're, they're a smaller type. Sand boas are small. They are a small species, really fun species, but they live most of their life underground. Um, but we're getting away from the point again. What I'm just wanting to say is always remember that these animals deserve your respect because without them There would be no us yeah. There would be no anything and every day their populations start to take more and more heat because of people Being afraid of them and taking a shovel to their head or anything like that And you know to a keeper somebody like one of us when we hear the only good snake is a dead snake Think about how it would feel if somebody walked up to you and said the only good dog is a dead dog, or if, or if that was on my property, I'd cut its head off. Like, it's, these are our beloved pets, and they deserve just as much love and appreciation as a dog and cat. So, we just wanted to come out today for Snake Day and talk about why they're so important and what they do for our ecosystems. You little... 
They keep... <laughs> they are nature's checks and balances. And yes, I know I've been bit, and he was a bad example to hold out, but he's a beautiful, beautiful python, so... And once he gets older, you know, young snakes tend to have more fear towards us. Yeah. But, you know, once you grow out and you handle them more and you pay attention to them a lot more, they'll get better. They'll be puppy dogs in your pocket. Yeah, pretty much. They are absolute sweethearts. Um, Ka, the 11-foot boa that I just had out, you know, she's been to hundreds of educational programs for kids and she's never bit anybody uh she's never bit me she is all all of our snakes are sweethearts some are just young and they're inexperienced and they don't know us yet but um with all that being said guys just go out if you are afraid of snakes go out of your comfort zone and, and own one go adopt one they are need all over the world um go out and study them in nature go just do a simple Google search on how many, on what snakes are in your area and what you can do for them. Find out exactly what snakes can do for you and how important they are. And after that, maybe you'll change your opinion. Maybe you'll want to own one. Maybe you won't kill the next one you see that's on your property because you thought it would threaten your dogs or something. You know? Just, if you find a snake on your property and you don't want it there, don't attempt to move it yourself, especially if you can't identify it. Call a professional like us, and we will come out and remove the snakes and relocate them. I'm so sorry about the camera falling. Um, yeah, with all that being said, guys, again, this is Nash. I'm Maya. And we wanted to thank you so much for 50 subscribers. That is huge for us. Um, Pia, again, I wanted to thank you for our collaboration video. And with all that being said, go paint your nails for Snake Day, you losers. What are you doing? <laughs> Get out there and do it. All right, guys, thank you so much, and have a great day.